So we're at a project here in Hampshire where we're installing 20 panels, a Tesla Powell 3 and a Zappi EV charge point. Now this is quite special because at about 12 o'clock, Gary Does Solar is actually going to be coming down to the house to take a look. Um, he played a part in consulting on the design for this project and so we're going to show him the system, talk about the system design and he's also going to tell us about some updates that he's got coming to his YouTube channel. We're also going to be having a chat with the client, Roger, about how he settled on this final system design, about his solar journey and also about how he chose the right installer to go ahead with as well. There are four main parts to this install. Uh, we've got two separate panel arrays. Uh, we've got six on a small outbuilding and then 14 on the main south facing roof. And then we've got the Tesla Powerwall 3 and we've got the gateway. Now the Powerwall's going in the garage. However, the gateway is going sort of 20 meters away behind the front door. And then there's also the Zappi EV charge point is going on the wall by the garage. So we're here with Gary Does Solar. Now, Gary actually was quite instrumental in consulting on the design for this solar system. And can you tell us a bit about that, Gary? How did you get involved in the project? Yeah, so I run the Gary Does Solar channel and yep. I do lots of videos, uh, uh, but I also have a service called Chat with Gary, yep. where people can uh, basically get some of my time and maybe ask me questions about an installation. Uh, and Roger got in touch with me yep. and uh, uh, he arranged for a, a session to have a chat with me. I basically just spent some time with him. I went through uh, his sort of aspirations, his plans. We discussed about different types of equipment, um, but then he reached out to Spirit Energy and uh, I looked over all the documentation that you supplied him as part of the quotation. Yeah. And uh, quite impressed with it, I have to say. I bring it. And then Roger made a decision uh, on the equipment that he wanted. You were able to supply, I think you were able to meet all of his uh, requirements. Uh, and here we are today with the installation going ahead. Yeah. And uh, Roger's very pleased. I'm very happy about the whole thing. Brilliant. Something you're doing, and we've discussed a bit, and um, I know you've spoken to Roger about, is your installer directory service. Can you yeah. tell us a bit about that? Yeah. I mean, so I started out you know, with the channel because I was in the situation that Roger was in right from the start. Yeah. You've got a, an aspiration to have solar and battery uh, installed on your property, but where do you start? You know, yeah. There's lots of different technologies that you can choose. There's different brands that you could go with. And of course, there are different install, installation companies that you could choose. The videos that I've done to date have been mainly around the technologies and around some of the brands and things like that. But of course, once the customer has decided roughly what they want to do they have to then find someone to do it for them yeah and this is where a, you know a huge mistake could be made so to avoid that i thought well what can i do about this mm. and i thought well one thing i could do is perhaps create a directory yep. of solar installation companies that i would be willing to spend my money with again you know, if i was having the installation done yep. again today who would i go with and yep. why um so that was the premise and uh it probably comes as no, well, it won't come as any surprise to you, Top, but Spirit Energy will be in that uh, list. So I think Roger's made a great decision here. I've had a look around the installation this morning. It looks really good. good. And uh, I can't wait to see the, the whole system being commissioned. Brilliant. Thanks, Gary. All right. Cheers, Top. This is the Tesla Powerwall 3. It's fully mounted, pretty much all the wiring's done as well. So I just thought I'd explain how it works. Effectively, you've got three cables that need to run from the Powerwall 3, which is here in the garage round to the gateway which is just inside the front door. Those cables are the AC power cable, the communications cable and then a Cat5 cable as well. The solar DC strings come in obviously from the roof. They're going into these external DC isolators. You get one external DC isolator per string um, and then the DC feeds down here into the Powerwall's MPPTs. Then over here, you've got the AC isolator. Here are those three cables I just spoke about. Here's the AC cable going into the AC isolator and then out again, round to the gateway.
I'm Nathan, I'm a technical designer here at Spirit Energy and I actually designed and quoted Roger's solar system. I'm now going to walk you through the design process for the system and show you how we landed on the final system specification. So the first iteration of the design was actually for 10 panels on the main roof, with 6 panels on the outbuilding, paired up with a Tesla Powerwall 3. This is the design that the national installer came up with when Roger got a quote from them. Roger actually ended up signing a contract with the national company a week after contacting Spirit. However, due to the complexity of the project, the national installer later had to cancel the contract as they couldn't install it the way that Roger wanted it to be installed, with the power wall in the garage, and they also didn't want to accommodate for the longer cable runs. So then when Roger called me up again to see if Spirit could do the installation instead, I decided that the best course of action would be to do a survey straight away. On the survey, we measured up the roof, discussed cable runs in kit locations, and also agreed that the power wall would go in the garage. Following the survey, we also realised that the initial design for 10 panels that the national installer recommended was not at all making the most of the roof space, and that we could actually squeeze four more panels in between the eyebrows of the roof. This, however, brought up another question. Would it actually be economically sensible to go for such a large solar system? Roger got unlucky with his DNO application, and SSE restricted his installation to 7 kilowatts, with 3.68 kilowatts of export. As a result of this restrictive DNO offer, we were concerned that there may be inverter clipping in the peak summer months when the solar system is generating at its best. For some larger solar systems, clipping can be quite significant and have a notable impact on the generation and therefore the investment return from the solar system. So at this point, I opened up an advanced modeling software that we use for running shade models. It's a really great piece of software and every good installer should have access to a similar tool and have the know-how to use it properly. To start with, I ran a simulation for just the panels on the main roof, for which there wouldn't be any clipping. I then reran the simulation to include the panels on the outbuilding. These six panels are expected to generate about 2,430 kilowatt hours per year, of which 307 kilowatt hours are estimated to be lost to inverter clipping as the result of a poor DNO offer. Roger was fine with that, and the six panels still made good sense financially, so we included them in the final system specification. After the PV sole simulations had been run, and we agreed on a final price, Roger was happy to go ahead with the installation and place his deposit in order form. After talking with Gary and Roger, we ended up losing the light, so couldn't film any more on the day. However, I wanted to talk a bit about some of the benefits that Roger will see from his new solar and battery system. Overall, the 20 panels are expected to generate 8,324 kilowatt hours every year, of which 5,894 kilowatt hours should come from the main array, and the remaining 2,430 kilowatt hours will come from the second array. Roger has an annual electricity usage of approximately 4,500 kilowatt hours per year, and going forward, 81% of that is expected to come from the solar system, meaning that he'll only need to draw and pay for 19% of his annual electricity consumption from the grid. Interestingly, of that 19% from the grid, 16% is expected to come from the battery being off-peak charged, and only 3% of his total annual electricity consumption should come from peak rate grid electricity, which is great. The system is oversized for Roger's requirements, and even though 81% of his annual electricity consumption should come from solar, only 44% of the total annual solar generation is expected to be used in the house. The remaining 54% will be exported back to the grid. Roger and Nathan agreed that it was prudent to oversize the system as this will help to future-proof against a potential electric car and any other home improvement upgrades that could add to his house's electrical load in the future. Certain energy tariffs, like those offered by Octopus, Eon and Tomato Energy, have very beneficial export rates, which can result in a large contribution to the return from the system when added up over the year. The system is expected to pay for itself within seven years and save over £1,500 in the first year alone. Should electricity prices continue to inflate at a similar rate to the average over the past 25 years, then his annual savings will increase as time goes on. We think it's really important when making an investment decision like solar that our clients are presented with as much data and information as possible. As such, all of our quotations include a full cash flow table, seasonal breakdown of solar generation, breakdown of financial benefits, some charts to show how the solar generation is used and how the house is powered, as well as a table that shows how their investment return will differ depending on the electricity inflation rate. 
So finally, after the system was completed, the only thing left to do was commission the system and get it all set up so that Roger could monitor it on his phone, input the details of his electricity tariff and set the percentage to leave in reserve for a power cut. Here's our interview with Roger. I guess there's two primary reasons why my wife and I finally decided to go solar. Yeah. Is we had this view that the, the inevitability of rise of electricity prices here in the UK is not going to stop. So we wanted a degree of self-sufficiency and we wanted a, an ability to kind of control that yeah. uh, increase. We reached that point last year and then it was a matter of deciding how to go ahead. What do we, what do we need to do? How are we going to do it? Uh, and that's when I, I guess I then had to do a lot of research to make, make sure we had the right design. So you, you worked out sort of what you wanted and then you went and said to three, four different suppliers, quote me for this. Yeah. We went out to a big national uh, company uh, and Spirit locally and another local provider. Yeah. And um, went out with the, if essentially a design around solar and a battery to see what they came back with. We originally went with a, a, a larger provider but actually what, what happened in the end was that they didn't have the flexibility that we required at yep. this property. This house is 110 years old. Yeah. It's, uh, it's got an old roof. Some runs were having to make through the roof space. Yeah. So they basically said, look, we can't do that, but um, uh, you know, we can go ahead with a different configuration. Uh, but I wasn't interested in that. That's when I went back to Spirit because of the flexibility that Spirit uh, provided. Here we are on day two of the installation. Your team have turned up. I felt very confident around the technical survey um, in terms of what was going to happen. The yep. team have turned up. They're installing now. We're commissioning this afternoon. So everything that I thought would happen is, yep. is happening today. Good. 